Right, today we're showing this product we supply the digital turbocharger pressure tester made by Jomatech. Um, it can read pressures up to 3 bar positive and for example you can use this for a boost pressure reading, DPF back pressures or any other air pressures up to 3 bar. It can also read vacuum down to 1 bar negative. So you can use it for like manifold vacuum, uh, vacuum, any supply to vacuum control systems like EGR control, vacuum control, boost control, actuators and so on. Uh, has an accuracy down to 1.5%. Um, you can display in either a, a graph, a graphical format, a little bit of layer, graphical format or, or, or numerical. Um, it has a long cable length so that when you are connected up to the to the intake system or vacuum lines you can bring the unit inside <coughs> the car with you when you want to perform a test drive um, it will also store the maximum reading so I'll just connect up with this one, connect up with a pressure gauge or a hand pump so for example we have it connected up to the to the boost pressure and we have it in on the car with us and so I'm, I'm just mimicking here but we were doing a test drive, so we'll bring it up to maybe 1.4 bar, say. And it'll store, it'll store the maximum here on the screen, even when we remove, remove the, the pressure to it. <clears throat> so this is useful, you can leave the unit on the passenger seat, you don't need a second person with you to watch it while, while you're test driving. Connect it up, put it on the passenger seat, drive the vehicle hard up through the gears, then you can pull in and see what your maximum boost was. And then to reset it back to zero, just press and hold the reset button. Connection methods then. The pressure sensor is mounted on the on the end of like it's like a network cable. That's another good point, is that if they have a problem with the pressure sensor, you just buy this separately, you don't have to replace the complete unit. So for connecting up to vacuum or, or, or boost lines, then you can use like standard push on six mil piping or cones or T pieces or whatever to connect in. But uh, one big advantage of it then is, on, for example, on modern, most modern diesel vehicles now, there's nowhere to plumb in to check the boost pressure reading. Uh, so you have to depend on what you may or may not have on the diagnostic tool. Um, so with this, they use like, it's like an injection needle connected to the end of the pressure sensor and you, you pierce in you, you push it into any any one of the boost the boost pipes now I know you think that when you make it a hole with this and take it out that's going to be leaking after but if you do it in a certain way it's making such a small hole that but also if you push it in in the same direction of the boost flow but and, and not straight in at an angle of about 30 degrees when you remove it, it you, you, you won't have a leak. So um, we'll show this later on, connecting it to a car and reading boost pressure. But um, it's, a, it's a good way of connecting in when there's no other options. Um, yeah, so the big advantage of being able to do this then is we can connect this up, bring it into the car, have our diagnostics connected up, and we can compare our actual boost to what the, 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 the data stream is showing us on the diagnostics. So this is a useful test to um, compare is the map sensor reading correctly or is the circuit for the map sensor and everything correct. Also then in some cases your diagnostic tool may not have the boost pressure data stream on the tool so you, where you, you have no option to view the boost you can view it, you can view it this way or for maybe plant or industrial vehicles that you don't have any um, diagnostic equipment for it's a uh, it's a good a good opportunity to be able to check the boost pressure and the way they have it designed with the just the sensor close to the close to the needle and it's kind of matched to work correct with the sensor and accurately so yeah it's very useful then to compare the actual boost to what the to what the diagnostics or dcu is seen and like that on vehicles that you don't have the opportunity to view the boost pressure it gives you this opportunity <coughs> So you can see here now where we've connected into the, the boost pipe. Um, we could have connected to any other boost pipe on the engine, 
this one or this one but ideally the best one to connect is the one after the intercooler on on its way into the engine um, but this was the best place for us to connect there was another short pipe here but there wasn't much room to for to, to shove in the needle at the angle we wanted so can see here then we have we, we shoved in the needle in the direction of the boost flow this, so this is the pipe on its way into the engine and we shoved it in at a 10 to 30 degree angle at the moment it's just pushed in there ideally if you were going for a test drive you would need to maybe tie tie cable tie around it just to hold the sensor steady on the pipe so but this is okay just for the purpose we're doing here on the, on the workshop floor so as you can see then the cable, like we said we have a good long cable so we can run it all the way into the into the vehicle. Uh, we'll just bring it over in front of the vehicle now and, and start the engine and let you see the, the boost reading. So now we just have it in, inside in the car with me, we can just start up the engine. So this is just checking it on the floor. Ideally, if you want to check the max boost pressure, you need to have it out on the road under under full load. But uh, just just for the purpose of displaying the tool, this is giving us um, a good indication of how it works. So you can see there, um, it's also recorded the max. If we want to reset the max, just press the reset button. Go again. to view it in a uh, graph mode let's go over here I'll just try zoom in on this a bit and also in graph mode you can adjust the refresh rate of the screen so we can adjust the refresh rate make it slower To make the refresh rate faster, we just press the um, slower and faster and over and back arrows. on the screen just you can just press the tick button that's like in a live pause mode or pause mode and then just press it again to start playing again so that's about here on, che on checking the turbo pressure um, next we'll just show the measure in a vacuum now it's uh, kind of hard to see this but um, we just used a t-piece and a couple of bits of pipe and we're teed in on the vacuum supply to the turbo actuator um, so uh, again we just want to take a measurement on the floor if you're going to test driving the vehicle rank you want to maybe cable tie this stationary up, up to a pipe or to support it in some way in this case we're not using we're not using the needle, we're just um, we're just using a 6mm pipe shoved straight onto the end of the pressure sensor and then onto the T-piece with the various fittings. So now we're just connected on to the uh, vacuum supply to the turbo actuator. I have the unit inside in the vehicle with me. Um, so we can see that we have a 760 millibar a negative vacuum to the turbo actuator and then we just press the mode button look ahead in the graph form you can see there 
when we accelerate hard and the engine re reaches its boost limit, the reducing the vacuum to the turbo actuator, therefore reducing the boost. So yeah, it's useful then for doing this for measuring a vacuum supply to anything, turbo actuators, EGR valves, and so on. So that's about it on this product. Um, have a look in the description below. I'll leave a, a link to, to our website where you can view, view more details on this product. Thanks.